Max, the NFL draft is coming up, and we have uh, the opportunity. We've got a couple of draft prospects who are going to drop by to talk to us, Texas-based draft prospects. Um, ex- great to talk to them about the process and all that fun stuff. A great opportunity to get to know some of these guys who may hear their name called in April. Yeah. And yesterday, we had the opportunity to talk to one of them. Safety from Texas State, Javante O'Roy. And here's our interview with Javante here on DCT of Life. Max, we mentioned it yesterday that the NFL draft is quickly approaching. Yep. End of April, the NFL yep. draft. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of names being kicked around. One of the names, hoping to hear his name mentioned at the NFL draft, is safety from Texas State. We are joined by Javante O'Roy. Javante, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing excellent. Thank you for, for taking a little bit of time to, to talk to us. I, I want to ask you a little bit about uh, the draft process. You're, you're looking to get uh, taken in the NFL draft. What has this uh, what has this process been like in preparing uh, for uh, the first day of your professional career? Um, it's, been a, it's been a great process. I love all the work that, um, that is required to, to put in. Um, to get to where I want to be, uh, it's, it's a very exciting process to go through these past few weeks and get ready for uh, to perform at this pro day. I want to ask you uh, about kind of coming up in, in your recruitment out of uh, you're out of California, out of Antelope, California, and uh, I know that uh, you know you were you were getting some looks from some FBS programs, uh, and then you you got hurt your, your senior year. Uh, of at yeah. Antelope, um, you end up going the, the community college ranks. Uh, you go through Sacramento Community College and then Palomar Community College. Uh, was was there a little bit of, of disappointment? Uh, what what were you feeling coming out of Antelope, knowing that you know maybe an injury away you could have started off at the FBS ranks? Uh, you know, just as a young kid and getting injured at that age and at that time period, it, it was a it was hard to process, but I kept a pretty good level head about it. I knew I'd, I'd be back and be able to rehab and, and, and get back to where I want to be. It was never um, – I was never lost in the process. I never thought, oh, I'm never going to play football again or anything like that. Um, it was always just the next step, what's what's going to happen next, how can I get, uh, get, get better, how can I rehab, how can I uh, just get to that next level. So I took it, took it uh, one step at a time and ended up where I'm at now. And then you end up going to Texas State, uh, you from Palomar uh, Community College out there in California. What kind of trend? What was that transition like going from uh, there, you know, playing community college ball to playing FBS ball uh, there in San Marcos? You know, it was, uh, I didn't think it was too different as far as like the game went. Um, There's there some, some new schemes and stuff that were different in the Division One level, but as far as like the speed of the game, and I thought it was all pretty, um, pretty similar. Um, Coming in, I was able to. I was fortunate enough to be able to spend the spring and spring ball and getting ready with the team. So I think that that definitely helped. That I grew a little bit as a player in that way, trans, um, transferring up to the Division One level. So we're talking with Javante O'Roy, safety from Texas State and NFL draft prospect yeah. here on DCTF Live. Get involved in the conversation at hashtag DCTF Live. I know we've. We've almost certainly got some some Texas State fans watching, and I'm particularly interested. You know, you did go through a coaching change. You, you got recruited there by Dennis Francione, and then you played your senior year, your outstanding senior year at Texas State under Coach Everett Withers. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the, the difference? Uh, what was the difference between maybe uh, playing under Coach Francione versus playing under Coach Withers? Um, you know, uh, it, was, it was a little bit different. Um, Coach Withers and his staff was, was very hands-on. Um, some of them are still young, so they're really energetic and on the field with you and and really just going through the drills with you. And, and, and it really brought a lot of energy to us and to the team, and I think it um, has a really good positive impact on us. Um, didn't have the outcome that we wanted this past season, but I think they're definitely headed in the right direction, and the program is, is definitely on the rise. I want to ask you a little bit about um, about playing in, in the Sun Belt. You know, we hear all about, oh, the SEC, oh, the Big Ten, oh, but the Big 12. Do you feel like the caliber of play that goes on at uh, in the Sun Belt and at Texas State and in the teams that they play, do you think that, that goes a little bit underappreciated from a nationwide standpoint? Oh uh, Yeah, I think so. Um, there's a lot of good players all over at any level, even in, in junior college. There's some guys that they are just really standout athletes and uh, for whatever one reason or another – um, didn't make it to the SEC teams, the Pac-12 teams, uh, all, any of those those big uh, big schools. Um, so there's a lot of good athletes 
anywhere you can go, anywhere you go, really. And there's a lot of good ones in the Sun Belt and, and good teams. And um, I think it does deserve a little bit more more credit than what it gets. Now I want to ask you, you know, you do have your uh, your pro day coming up. Uh, that's, of course, your, your big opportunity to uh, to spotlight yourself and spotlight your skills. Uh, what are you hoping to uh, to show coaches uh, uh, when you, with your upcoming pro day? Uh, I'm really just looking looking to perform in the uh, the skills test. I know uh, um, you have to run a good forty for the, uh, initially, so then just turn heads and and really um, just get the get their attention. Um, and then just besides that, uh, the position drills are are really crucial. I think they uh, want to see how well I can transition and uh, be able to play man to man. So want to see my hips and and different drills like that so uh, certainly a, not, a lot to prove there uh, at your pro day and now Javante I do have one more question and I think it's the most important question oh, here in we my go. in my research yeah. I know that you played you played San, you, you played at uh, Texas State which is in San Marcos Texas before that <laughs> in the in in a very bizarre twist you come from Palomar Community College in San Marcos California and so Javante O'Roy yeah. I have to ask you, San Marcos, Texas, or San Marcos, California? Oh man, <laughs> I might have to go with San Marcos. San Marcos, Texas is yeah. very unique. Mm -hmm. um, there's, a, there's a lot of great things about Texas. I, I transferred. I went to my visit and I loved it. So transferred in and and San Marcos, San Marvelous, as they say, uh, is oh, a, uh, man. a very very beautiful place and and it's very unique. Listen, he's, he's got all the right answers. He's Javante. He knows, he knows how to play to the he, audience. He knows how to play to the audience. <laughs> he is Javante O'Roy, uh, Texas State Safety, hoping to hear his name called at the NFL draft at the end of April. Javante, appreciate your time. Congratulations on all your success, and uh, good luck in your pro day and uh, down the road. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Cool dude. Yeah, cool dude, yeah. and um, appreciate him hopping on with us. He was – Javante O'Roy was – is is the perfect example of needing to separate a player from results the, from the results. Yeah, he was probably their most reliable defender all year. Sure. He was third on the team in tackles. He led the team in interceptions. Right. He was. I mean, he was probably their most reliable defender. And and the number. I mean, listen, the numbers for the Texas State defense were a little ugly. Mm -hmm. But he. But I think that you know it. it it's difficult to kind of tease that out. Uh, because he was actually pretty good, I would say he was probably their their most reliable defender. There's a couple other guys that yep. you could put in that in that category. Maybe a guy like uh, like Brian London or Gabe Lloyd, but at, at least from a um, from a secondary perspective, in yeah. the secondary, there's no doubt. I think he was the most reliable defender and their most valuable defender. Um, I hope he gets a shot. I really yeah. do. Um, Appreciate him taking the time. We also uh, had a chance to talk to Glenn Antoine of Idaho, mm -hmm. uh, Round Rock's finest, mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun. We don't want to wait to release it until next week. So we'll have it up on the website. We'll get that. Mm -hmm. You guys should check out that interview, yeah. too. It was really awesome. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of put that out on our channels. But both guys. Really awesome. Yeah. Like, not getting the attention that they probably deserve sure. for the work they put in, and hopefully they get a shot. Exactly, and that, that's the thing is that, like, we're, we're, we'll talk a lot about as the draft goes on, like, Miles Garrett, right? Because yeah. Miles Garrett, is he going to go number one or number two? You know what I mean? Like, he won't he won't escape number two in the draft, you know? Right. But there's a lot more well, – but there's no doubt that he's getting drafted. Right. You know what I mean? What I'm interested in is in the back half of the draft – Yep. Do will a team take a take a chance on a guy like Javante O'Roy, right. who was I think I think fl flies under the radar. I think and, so too. And so yeah. it's it's exciting for him, and, and so we we wish him all the best, and our thanks to Javante O'Roy of Texas State for hopping on with us.